Hello and welcome to LIBS 201 Symposium, Exploring the Unknown. My name is Eric McGuckin. I'll be your host this semester. I'm an anthropologist by discipline. I spent two years in the 1990s with Tibetan refugees up in the Himalayas in India, and I walked away probably less enlightened than I went there, at least certainly less sure of my truths. This is my favorite class to teach in the lower division, and I think it is ever more important because we live now in an era that's been called the era of post-truth, when even the president of the United States retweets conspiracy theories every day, in which we're told that a deadly pandemic may actually be a plandemic, and that the election, should a certain person not win, will be rigged. So it's ever more important to me, I think, to examine how we know what we know and what is a justifiable belief. This course will examine that in many, many ways. Hi, my name is Wendy Ostroff, and I started teaching in Hutchins 20 years ago this very week. I am a cognitive and developmental psychologist and I studied learning and perception across the uh, early childhood years. I've written about curiosity and I've written about um, questioning and how kids learn and translating the science of child development into the classroom. I love teaching 201 because we get to ask the big, big questions that scientists and philosophers and thinkers, theologians, and artists have grappled with for tens of thousands of years. So we get to go really, really big in LIBS 201. And in a way, that corresponds to my discipline, which is about learning, because it's all about how we create knowledge. And so since I'm fascinated by the learning process, I'm also fascinated by what learners do when they approach those things that are just out of our reach, when we explore the things that are impossible to know, for sure, that are impossible to get evidence for, and they're just out of our grasp. So 201 is exciting for me, it's a joy for me, because in a way, all knowledge and all learning is about exploring the unknown. So we get to look at the content of the stuff we can't know or don't know yet, but we also get to look at the process of how we try to get there and what we do when we can't get there. So it's all about asking questions. Um, there's a lot of overlap with my research on asking questions. And it's all about that place, that place of not knowing that I think is the most exciting to approach. So I'm excited to join you on this journey in LIBS 201. And I can't wait to see what we discover together. Thanks. Hi everyone, I am Amanda Culp and I am leading LIBS 201 Section 3 this semester. I am a theater historian by trade and I specialize in ancient Indian theater. And I love theater for a lot of the same reasons why I love this class. Because at its core, I see theater as a way that human beings have attempted to make meaning out of their world and have created beauty through the endeavor of trying to make meaning. So in that vein, I'd like to share a brief snippet of T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets, uh, which puts this effort into words far better than I ever could. So if you'll indulge me, he writes, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. So exploring the unknown to me means constantly changing my perspective and encountering my world again and again, as if for the first time. I look forward to working with you this semester. Enjoy. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Leonard and I'm the instructor for section seven. Just wanna take a quick second to say hello. Hope you have a good semester. A um, little bit about me, I have a background in the study of religion two master's degrees, and I'm pursuing my PhD in political theology right now. Uh, and one quick fun fact, I um, did some skydiving in Hawaii a few years back and jumped out of a plane at 14,000 feet. So um, I can tell you it was a great experience for any of you who might be interested. Okay, please have a safe and healthy semester. Be well. 
Hey everybody, welcome to LIB 201. I am one of the instructors for this class. Uh, my name is Kevin Wynn. My pronouns are he, his, him. Um, my background is in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. It sounds like a lot, but I mostly am interested in how people learn and engage in science and engineering outside and inside of school. Um, and so this class means a lot to me because this class for me um, explores epistemology, which briefly just means how do we know anything as a society and how do we just make decisions based on the knowledge that we have? And I think most importantly, how are we responsible for the knowledge we create as a society and what do we do with, do with it in a changing political, racial, and environmental time? And so... This, this class asks some really major philosophical questions, both in terms of re religion and spirituality and science. And I think it's important to, I guess I say, have these ex existential crises um, to really figure out what we're trying to do um, as a species, as humans. And so I really hope you enjoy this class. And again, welcome. Uh, symposium will not parallel precisely the texts in your seminar sections uh, each week. It may or it may not, but each uh, session will be kind of a standalone session examining these questions of how we know what we know and what are justified beliefs uh, from a number of angles, including science, religion, uh, altered states of consciousness, meditation, illusion, lying, magic, death, near-death experience. Um, unfortunately, as you know, we're online this semester and because it would not be fair to charge you course fees, we don't have that $8,000 budget we usually have to bring you to uh, mountaintop Zen centers, to bring a Native American shaman in, to maybe even do a healing on some students, uh, or to provide us with a, with a live magic show actually. We just may have a live magic show. Uh, it may be a, one of only two live Zoom sessions for this course, and that will be, we hope, on September 18th at 10 a.m. Otherwise, this course is entirely asynchronous, that is, on your own time. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to use my handy-dandy technological expertise to share my screen and show you our symposium page, which you may have already become familiar with. Here's the home page overview. Here's our learning objectives, which are the same learning objectives as the course as a whole. It will be one live Zoom session, we hope, with a magician uh, at 10 a.m. on September 18th, and maybe one uh, later on in the semester. We'll let you know well in advance. Attendance is mandatory, and attendance is actually just accessing the page and doing the responses. I cannot know what you're doing while you're online. I can see if you've uh, accessed the page. I can see how long you've stayed on the page, but you might be like my daughter who zooms in her class with the camera towards her face and in her lap is her Nintendo Switch and she's playing Animal Farm. So, uh, you know, what I can see is if you've engaged with the material. So we want you to summarize the material and then respond and enunciate some sort of position, enunciate key questions. Those will be graded each week. And at the end of the semester, I'm gonna send those points, there are four points per week that you can get uh, to your seminar instructor. Your seminar instructor is the one who will be assigning you the grade. It's Symposium is supposedly three of the nine units for this course, so it's going to be about a third of your grade. Um, late work, well, uh, after one week, it's uh, uh, a one-point grade deduction, and it's three points the second week, and after that, you should uh, contact your compassionate seminar instructor to discuss making work up. Uh, the work, uh, the, the modules will become available to you of uh, the week that they are due, that is on uh, Monday morning at 12 a.m. And then the module is due 
by the following Sunday night at midnight. If you have any issues, please contact your compassionate seminar, seminar instructor. You may also contact me, of course, via email, and I can arrange a Zoom for you. Um, if you need that, please also use the question and answer forum, which will allow your fellow students to see your questions and the answers I can give them. And look, already somebody has an answer, uh, excuse me, question. And I have an answer for this. Do we have a Zoom for the first class? Yes, let's go to the modules. So I go to the home page. Down at the bottom, it says, hey, you want to get started? Go to the modules. Boop. Here are the modules. Do we have a film the first week? We absolutely do. This module will, uh, for the first week, will have some additional materials uh, by Friday. Uh, including uh, this video and uh, some introductions and portfolio stuff. But the bulk of your work for this symposium is to watch this film, Dishonesty. You're going to click on the link. It's going to open up. You're going to open this up and you can watch it on your screen or hopefully you can uh, screen mirror. And maybe watch it on your television screen. And then after you've watched the film, the video, the guest speaker, whatever, you will post the discussion by Sunday night. You're going to write two paragraphs. Each paragraph is worth two points. So you can get up to four points per symposium. The first paragraph is an abstract of what was said. What is essentially what the symposium was about? What are the essential points? Connect it, if possible, to epistemology, which is the study or philosophy of knowledge and addressing how we know what we know and what constitutes justifiable belief. That's the whole theme of this symposium, if not the entire Libs 201 course. Uh, and then you'll follow that with an intellectual response. What is your takeaway? What are your key questions? You know, be specific, make connections to course materials and to course discussions. Uh, course to the theme of knowledge and truth. While you can editorialize or as I call it gripe about what you liked and what you didn't like and what was boring and what was cool, that verbiage does nothing to add nor subtract to your grade. The task is an intellectual response. So that's the first week and as you can see every week, next week we have a little video about intelligence trees, which uh, connects to the readings on animal intelligence and communication of funguses and forests. Wow. Yeah, that's actual science now, really. And then we'll, we'll have, a, this will be filled out later with uh, Wendy Ostroff will talk to us about illusions and the brain. You'll see these modules open up every week. They will populate with materials for you. I have not posted all of it here because of uh, well, I have everything planned, but things may change, as we know. One of the known knowns that we know, there are many unknowns, but we know that the semester is going to be wild. As I was recording this, I was interrupted by a Nixle alert that 17 miles away were being evacuated. So maybe later today, I may lose power. I may be on the run from fires. So uh, we're going to be flexible. We're going to be um, changing things, but uh, you will know things well in advance. The reason I open these the week that they're due is I don't want you to start working way ahead when things may change, uh, when new exciting materials may become available. And also I want you to work with these materials uh, around the same time that your, your class, your seminar section is working with these. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, please go to the, the uh, course Q&A. And uh, also you can make an appointment with me. Uh, write me at mcguckin at sonoma.edu. We can work via email or we can set up a Zoom meeting. And of course, if you have any need for any types of accommodations, please contact me and your professors, okay? So uh, with that, you know, um, let's expect the unexpected. We don't know what the future will bring. Um, so basically, that's how this course will work. If you need any accommodations, please get a hold of me. 
and your seminar instructor. If you need to contact me with any questions, please use the question and answer forum so that everybody can see it. If you have a personal issue, please email me, mcguckton at sonoma.edu, and we can uh, either communicate through email or we can set up a Zoom meeting face-to-face. Uh, and with that, I'm just going to leave you with my favorite quote about truth and justifiable belief by a very wise man who lived uh, 2,500 years ago. In, uh, he's from Nepal, and he lived most of his life in India. His name was Siddhartha Gautama. He's also known as the Buddha. And here's what he said about the truth. Do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in anything simply because it is spoken and rumored by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious books. Do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers and elders. Do not believe in traditions because they've been handed down for many generations. But after careful observation and analysis, when you find that anything agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and the benefit of all, then accept it and live up to it. Thank you. I'm excited for this semester. Have a great, great semester. Take care.